Okay, so you've got your uh, nicely textured model, um, and you've used, you know, uh, dynamically generated procedural textures for it, and that's great. Uh, but it's only sort of to a point. To take it to a next level, we need to add some kind of brush strokes and something uh, unique to this model, something that you can't get from procedural modeling or not modeling texturing rather. So we're going to have a look at the uh, what are we going to look at? We're going to have a look at the brush maker. That's right. So let's have a little demo of the brush maker first. So I'm going to go into isolation mode and then select the ground because it's a nice flat bit to work on. So we've got a paint layer here, and what we're going to do is go to our alphas, and down the bottom here I've got the uh, brush maker dynamic. So that gives us some chance to you know alter the way it works and alter the way things um you know generate as you brush your stroke so instead of getting like a straight line you'll get you know some variation we can change the size and rotation and all sorts of things so let's uh, click on that to add that to our brush and now when i draw out you'll see that i draw uh, a line but essentially, you know, the alpha is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it resets. And that's controlled by um, the alpha settings. Under dynamic stroke, uh, we have a stamp count. So if I reduce this stamp count down, um, it will get to the largest one quicker and then reset. So you can, you know, define your stroke. You can either go very low or you can go very high and you'll get more or less you know depending upon your settings essentially um, the other thing we can do let me set this down is change where it starts from so it's either the beginning which is the smallest value uh, or we can go random and then it will start at a random point and then just reset and carry on as normal and that's probably great if you're doing kind of small jerky kind of gritty strokes but you know if you're doing a long stroke it's probably not going to make much difference in the in the long run so let's put that back to beginning again so that's all very well and good but it's not actually very exciting uh, so first thing we do is show you how to change the brush basic brush behaviors so under parameters we have size and rotation um, so for size we can define a start value zero it's the smallest and then value one the largest um, and then we can have a middle value so for example if I do it as it is that's what we get uh, if I adjust the end value down it won't get as big and then it will reset and let me pop that down there and if I adjust the middle value down my middle value will change and you'll see I get a more kind of splayed kind of uh, view oh sorry stroke that's not what uh, I didn't mean view I don't know why I said that uh, okay so you can change your stroke in that manner uh, but we can also change the rotation so we can rotate it we can have a minimum and a maximum and a middle value and as I stroke along there you'll see that it's rotating you know as we move so they're the, the basic ones, the ones that I use most. Uh, the opacity and the hardness work in the same way, except they work on the opacity and the hardness of the brush, of course. Okay, so that's the, the basic strokes. You can enhance that if you go back up to the, the brush up here uh, by changing your spacing. Um, we can update our jitters, for example. So I can also introduce a size jitter into that and it will add a certain randomness into our stroke. Uh, we could add a position jitter, which will break up our stroke and you know make it look much more random. You can take that down a little bit. Um, and we can change our flow and angle jitter if we want. So we won't get quite so regular a, a, a stroke. Things are gonna look more and more random. Okay, so that's the the essential basics of the, the stroke itself. Um, but, but if you could only use this square, it would be a bit rubbish, wouldn't it? 
So in the next little section, we're going to change the square and you know get something that's going to be more useful to us. So I shall talk to you then. Okay, so I've just reset my project, so we've got some at uh, blank to start with. Uh, but I've got still got my settings on my uh, random brush or my brush maker. Um, but as I said, what we want to do is stop using this square and start using something more interesting. So uh, in the alpha section, under parameters, we've got pattern. And if you drop that down, you've got all sorts of set patterns you can use. But the real power comes with a custom alpha. So once you've set custom alpha, you get this image input for custom alpha. And then we can place an alpha in there. So let me just reset that. So we've got all our alphas here. And the really interesting ones are the ones with a bit of randomness built in. Oops, there we go. So if you type in random up there, you'll get these um, alphas that have all got these little balls at the bottom, uh, which means they include randomness, which makes them useful, really useful uh, for dynamic strokes. So uh, let's pick one and uh, I don't know. Let's try some. What should we use? Cracks? Yeah, let's try cracks. So if we drag and drop our cracks onto that alpha, it's important not to click on it because it will replace the alpha that you're currently using. So under there then we have seed options. So we can create a random seed. So we can keep changing that. And we have use dynamic stroke mode. So if I increase that, we should be able to paint onto there. And it's not very visible, which is terrific. Um, but it is painting. And it would be really helpful actually if I switch this to perhaps just no, not base color. What am I painting on then? I must be painting on something. Mm. Perhaps I'm not. Uh, let's add in a fill. I'll just pop it below and I'll make it uh, black so that we can see what's going on. There we go, that's much nicer. So as I'm making my strokes here, you'll see that we're getting these cracks and they're going all over the place. And if I go to my custom alpha parameters, uh, I can turn the use dynamic stroke mode off and it will behave ever so slightly differently. There we go, let's undo those, redo my black background, there we go, let's get rid of that. So each of these different uh, alphas here will have different kind of parameters to use. Uh, so if I turn this back on again, have a look back down it's cracks we've got density luminosity variations um, advanced blending so you can update that to to do what you want uh, I want something a little bit more uh, kind of dirty than that so let me just delete that and put a new one in and then I'll change my alpha out for something else uh, so what do we got we got this mold here that might be interesting so it's drag and drop that onto our image input and we can change the seed with our random seed and paint in. Uh, I don't think I've got much in the way of variation going on here. I think I want, let's check our jitter settings are uh, okay. Let's change our rotation here and we should get a little bit more variation as we're painting. So instead of painting just you know as a you know a single alpha or a single size, or keep changing your um, you know brush size as you're going, uh, this will somewhat do it for you. Uh, let's try another alpha, see if we can find something exciting to use. It's typical when I come to actually demonstrate things, I can never actually find what I want to show. Uh, so let's drag and drop that onto there. I'll get rid of that and put a new one on and then paint in and we have our random seed of course I can click the random seed and it will give me a different one I can keep clicking that there we go 
and you know you can start painting in all sorts of ways and get all sorts of variations without you know too much effort okay so that's changing out the custom alpha um, next we'll actually start to use this and you know see what effects we can get out of it so I'll talk to you then okay so I've got my front wall selected so now I can actually start to paint up here and what I want to do is use that green to you know the green we use for the roof to enhance this so I'm gonna go to uh, paint I've got my brush maker still selected and we're gonna pick a, a suitable alpha uh, so let's have a look what alphas we've got We've got some smudges, we've got some brushed, I quite like this brushed dirt. Now that's why you don't just click it because it overrides your brush. So now I'm going to have to come out and find the brush maker again and pop that back on. And then redo the brush maker. It's annoying, uh, especially for me because I do it a lot. Okay, so let's type in random here. And what do I want? Um, wasn't that one brushed pastel spread don't think it was that one either oh well we'll use that one anyway so let's drag that into our image inputs uh, we've got a uh, random seed which we can um, set and use invert and hardness let's just brush across see what happens uh, I've got lots of variation on this at the moment so I'm gonna bring that size down let's go back up to the brush Increase the size a little and then reduce my jitter. There we go. So I want to be able to kind of brush down there with that colour. Uh, I think the size settings need an updating. I don't want a super small one and I don't want it super big. So I'm going to just even those up a bit. Uh, so from a brush itself, uh, I want that colour that we used on the roof. So I'm going to select that from my swatches because we saved it. And then let's have a look. So if I now start to brush down here, I'm going to get a pretty random kind of pattern going down there, which is going to, if I turn on uh, that, it's going to start to integrate our um, wall into our uh, into our roof so yeah I'm gonna to go to isolation again and pick the front wall there we go it's gonna make that a bit bigger just kind of brush that down a bit but I don't want it to be like completely straight on it to be a little bit random you know I don't want what I'm doing by that is I don't want to do completely straight strokes I want to you know add some variation and once we've done that we could perhaps go back to our alpha and change out our other alpha for something else uh, perhaps something a little bit organic -y. so let's try this veins so if I click in that that's what I get so I can introduce that towards the top to add a little bit more interest there we go so let's have a look see what we've got so now that looks a bit more uh, how can I put it believable and I can do that if I go around say uh, the left wall I'll do the same drag that paint up above there come to the actual visible side let's just move our uh, light around a little bit and I just want to go up and down there a bit to you know give that a little bit of interest and then we'll go to the right wall move my light again oops I need a paint layer above the uh, smart material we've got there there we go something like that and we should have a back wall somewhere there we go 
again I'll leave that paint layer above and then I can sort of start to sketch that in there we go right back to full view and now it's starting to look a little bit more integrated with that uh, with the walls and the roof excellent okay so I mean that's basically the brush maker um, you know you can do all sorts of things to it you can you know update it and change it and really get some good variation out of your uh, you know out of your painting um, so I'm going to do another video on this which will follow on which will follow the same sort of themes about getting a bit of randomness into your your painting and using different you know tools and methods to to get that so I shall talk to you then